we've invited someone to help talk us through this problem that even has a name. It's been called suicide contagion. Mark Senor is a psychiatrist. Mark, you work at Sunnybrook Hospital in Toronto. Uh, I'm wondering, from the point of view of someone who is suffering, how can media coverage of a suicide affect them? Well, thank you for having me. It's, a, it's an important topic. And people who are struggling with depression or anxiety or substance use problems um, have thinking errors. Their um, thoughts say to them that, um, at least in some cases, that life isn't worth living, that people don't care about them. Um, but in fact, it's not true. And we know um, that when people come and seek help, uh, that they can get a lot better and that those thoughts can change. Um, so when people see a prominent suicide death in a, a celebrity, uh, they sometimes identify with that and they, they make the mistake of copying that behavior uh, and not realizing that it was a terrible tragedy and that instead they should have sought help. And, you know, when I, when I look at the way the media does cover suicides, particularly high-profile ones, I mean, there is a sensitivity to the approach. I mean, we try to be selective about our coverage, too. And I wonder, is that the right way to go about it? I mean, is there a risk of, of concealing or hiding aspects of depression and suicide in a way that ends up being unhelpful? I mean, should, should everything be out in the open as much as possible? Yeah, I, I, I think everyone is going to find out about these deaths anyway. I don't, I don't think there's a, a desire to conceal them, but I do think there's a desire to contextualize them. We have to understand that the over, overwhelming majority of people who think about suicide ultimately find resilience. They find, um, you know, paths to resilience and they don't die by suicide. Um, and there was actually research that was done in Europe which showed that after media reported on what typically happens, which is uh, people thinking about suicide but seeking help and, and getting better, that there was actually actually a, a reduction in suicides across the entire country of Austria. And so what we're really hoping is just that you present things as they are. You know, we always hope there are teachable moments uh, when something like this happens. How should people start to help others that they suspect may need help? I don't think we're expecting everybody to become psychologists or psychiatrists, uh, but usually if someone around you is, is depressed or anxious or withdrawing or using more substances, uh, people pick up on it. And I think that what people can do is just to, to listen, to, to be there and to uh, approach the person and, and to say that you care, that they're an important person, uh, that you're interested in helping them. Um, and maybe just talking could be enough for some people to help with a suicidal crisis. And for other people, um, if that's not working, then to encourage them to, to reach out, to, uh, to call a crisis line or to go to an emergency department. There is hope. Mark, indeed. Mark Senor, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us. Thank you. So, in this country, for every suicide death, there are as many as 20 attempts and to Mark's point, if you or someone you know are at risk, there are definitely places you can go for help. You can call the Canada Suicide Prevention Service, or if you're in Quebec, you can call 1-866-APPEL.